Hi, in this tutorial I am going to run through the procedure involved in doing some computational fluid dynamics in the IES virtual environment software. Now the first thing you'll need to do is to have your geometry of your building uh, made. So it's your model. I'll give you a quick look at this in the 3D viewer so you can see what's going on here. I've got three rooms that each have a window and I don't know if you can see that in there, but inside in the room I've also got a hole on the other side of the room which is connected to a stack. And on top of the stack I've got another opening up here. Now I haven't in this model calculated what the openings are that are required for ventilation. I've just put some in there just to see it working. So I'll come out of the model viewer there now. Okay, so I've uh, in Microflow I've set these windows to have a particular opening type. Um, you can see here I've called them new window opening and setting the opening types has been covered in a previous video so I'm not going to go through those again but basically what we've got here is we've got the macro flow model complete the geometry is there and the opening types are there so I need to run this model now I'm going to go into Apache and I'm going to come down to my Apache sim now there are a couple of things to watch out for at this next stage uh, first thing we need to look for is to make sure that macro flow link is ticked. Okay, we need the macro flow link there. Otherwise, those windows are not going to be simulated. What I've done here is I've reduced the time frame that I'm going to run the simulation over just to speed things up a little bit. You may find you want to run this from the 1st of January to the 31st of December, but just to speed it up, I'm going to go with June and July. Under output options, just have a look on here. All of these need to be checked and you also need to have all four rooms. In this case, I've got four rooms, but all of your rooms have to be selected here for detail output, uh, which is uh, involves clicking on the room, holding down the control key and clicking on the remainder of them, letting go of the control key and then you can go OK. So I should be OK to simulate this now. I'll probably get a warning telling me that I've already got one and it'll be overwritten and that's fine. I'm just going to go yes to that. Depending on the size of your model, this next step can take anything from whatever the 10 seconds is taking me up to, you know, even even a couple of hours, perhaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the uh, the stack, the chimney stack here, for, for uh, example, and I'm just going to have a look at the external ventilation the macro flow external ventilation and I'm just going to see when is the maximum time so the time of maximum flow through the ventilation uh, stack is at half past three on the fourth 14th of July now the reason why I'm picking that maximum time is that as part of my CFD analysis my computational fluid dynamics I have to pick an instance uh, to simulate so I'm picking a time when I've got maximum ventilation so half past three on the 14th of July that's fine that's as far as you need to go with uh, Vista um, what we need to do is come up to the analysis tab sorry apologies it's the Vista tab up here and go to export boundary conditions when you click on this you get a little uh, calendar coming up and this is now where you select the time and date that we looked at 30 seconds ago so it was the 14th of July and it was 1530 so this is now your boundary conditions and what's happening here is the computer is taking the conditions of the room and conditions of what's going on in the room and outside the room in terms of ventilation at exactly half past three on the 14th of July and it's exporting that to a BCF type file so I'm just going to go OK to that that's it that is now stored away in the computer ready for the next step so the next step to get your computational fluid dynamics is to come over to the microflow application on the left hand side just going to do a left click on here now if I want to do a macro uh, microflow uh, simulation where I get to see a slice through the building and I want the entire building to be uh, part of the image uh, what I need to do first of all is to connect the spaces okay so a couple of things to watch out for here first of all make sure internal analysis is selected from the drop down menu I think it's the default so it probably will go to that anyway but just keep keep that in mind that's worth checking the next thing we need to know now to do now is to join these spaces up I've got three office rooms and you can see they're called office over here in the left hand side I've got three offices and I've got a stack so what I'm going to do is select the ground floor by doing a click on it and I'm going to join on the first floor the second floor and the stack to that and the 
join button is this button up here which will allow me to create a multi-zone space so left click on that and I can now uh, click on the uh, first floor hold down the control key click on the top floor and also click on the stack so I've selected my ground floor first of all then I come up to the button to create the multi-zone space so the ground floor is that office there then I selected the first floor, the second floor and the chimney stack all while holding down the control key and I go add and then I can go close and that has made a single zone out of that uh, three rooms and the stack okay the next thing I need to do now just to make sure that has worked is if I click on the ground floor again my model should go grey the line work will go grey like that which is fine that's what we would expect to see so the next thing we need to do now is to while that room is selected go down one level and in this setting here now we've got a chance to change some grid settings I'm going to run through uh, kind of standard ones for you uh, you may decide that you want to have uh, a different level of detail than me so you can play around with these settings as, as you wish yourself but we want to have a look at this button up here first of all which is for the settings now I don't need to talk you through all of these but just to get some of the main ones right um, the first thing we need to do under the turbulence model is to make sure that KE is selected and under the desecration model which is this one here make sure it says hybrid okay I don't have time to go into the differences between them here now but if you can just run with this it will give you some kind of results now the next thing we need to do is to go up to the CFD grid settings which is this one here um, the standard ones are 100 mil for the grid spacing and uh, 10 mil for the grid line merge tolerance um, and that's that's okay I can I can accept those as they are so I'll go okay to that next thing now is to import the boundary conditions that we saved from Vista about uh, three or four minutes ago so that is under the um, Ma microflow tab up here at the top of your toolbar and you can go down here to the import boundary data option and do a left click you need to tell it which boundary you want to bring in by clicking on the box here and I've only got one in the memory of my computer it's the one we created from Vista uh, two or three minutes ago I want to bring in the opening flows that's important that I bring those in I don't have any room gains in my model I haven't got any equipment or lighting or people in there for gains so I'm going to leave that out for the moment but later on if you're putting in components for people and computers and equipment and things like that you may want to do that but leave it blank for now um, window operation well this is whether it's top left bottom right hung whatever it may be I'm just going to go with a top hung window and I'm going to accept the uh, default settings down here so I clicked on here made sure that this was the right file type I ticked the box for import openings and I changed the opening position to the top and I'm going to go OK to that now okay so this is the stage now where we're at that we can go uh, maybe up one level here and sorry we need to go back down one level apologies back down one level and this button here is the run button so this is now going to run the CFD simulation so I'm going to click on that left click on that uh, these boxes here these tech box tick boxes are just telling you that your computer has sufficient memory in the RAM to deal with the computational fluid dynamics it's quite an intensive um, analytical program to run so that's good to see those coming up there so I'm just going to go OK to that it's generating the grid which is going to be a uh, grid spacing of 100 mil now uh, I'm going to show you this starting and then I'm going to pause the video because it can take a little bit of time the iterations default to 500 now the more you have the you could argue the better the quality your result will be um, 500 is is quite high you know a couple of hundred probably will do you depending on what you're looking at but just to speed things up I'm going to change that to 50 okay now again you could argue the quality of my result is not uh, as good as it could be but it will speed things up uh, and that's the only thing you need to change on that just change that 500 to 50 come down here now to the run button and do a left click and you will see some um, statistical analysis will will start off here you make sure that this says running down here and you'll start seeing some residuals coming up here and we want to see these kind of flatlining 
Um, so I'm just going to wait for a second to get this started. Yeah, you can see it here now. Depending on the RAM of your computer, the speed of your computer and the processor, this can take anything from two or three minutes to even a couple of hours and really it depends on two things. Firstly, the power of your computer and secondly, the complexity of the model. So I'm just going to pause my tutorial video now and you can see these lines are beginning to move from left to right and when they're near the end, I'll turn the video back on. Okay, so you can see here that the uh, red lines have moved quite a way over towards the right hand side now. Uh, in total, my uh, video was paused there for about four maybe five minutes so it does take quite a bit of time and what's worth remembering at this stage is that this is for one instance in time it's for half past three on the 14th of July this is not for a whole year or anything like that it's for one almost split second in time so um, you know it does take a little bit of time there's quite a lot going on here as you can imagine so once this has gone over to the 50 iterations and you see run completed down here um that's it You're, you can pretty much go back in now and have a look at what the analysis looks like so you don't hit run again because that will just start off the whole process again just close that down now and what we want to do now is to have a look at the um have a look at the actual analysis of it and get an idea of what the images are beginning to look like. So what we need to do is to have a look at this, which is the Microflow Viewer button. It's just over here. So we'll click on that. Now, I chose the 14th of July at half past three because that was the time of maximum airflow. Remember in Vista, I went looking at the ventilation flow rate, so I wanted to see when was the maximum flow going through the stack? What I'm interested really here is to see what are the um, what are the air speeds like in there. So what I'm going to do is have a look at the velocity key. Um, so you know I can I can look at a couple of different things at one time, but I, I think velocity will do for now. So I'm going to velocity key. Um, how do I want to display the velocity then? Well, I like the look of the velocity filled. Uh, contour so I'm going to select that one and uh, I'm going to go to the Y grid which will allow me to put the um, contours running from left to right if I click the the X grid here they run kind of north to south you can see them there but I'm going on the uh, Y grid and these buttons here then will allow you to deter will determine where about the uh, slice is taken so if I click on that one you can see it comes in here if I move it over to here you can see the slice going in in that location uh, I'm going to go down here and you can see the slice coming down there so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get a slice that's going through the windows at the front of the building and also um, going up through the stack okay so that's probably a good enough one there now to get the oh, I can go a bit more actually um, yeah okay we'll pick that one so to get the uh, to move this model around, I'm holding down the left mouse button, uh, and that will allow me to uh, zoom around. Um, I can also zoom in. And, uh, sorry, I can also uh, no, I can't. I thought I could pan around here. I think if I want to zoom in and out, I have to click up here, uh, and then hold down the mouse key, and push the mouse away from me and pull the mouse towards me. Um, as I'm holding down the left key, if I want to pan, it's this button up here. Um, and this one here will allow me to kind of rotate the view. So you can see what's going on here. Um, the model is showing the larger amount of air is going up through the top and out through the uh, chimney stack. Now, really a kind of a cutoff point for air movement would be about 0.3 of a meter per second. And you can see that my bar, my velocity bar goes up to 0.4. So what I want to do here is to see um, maybe change the, the maximum value up here to 0.3. I've got an area in here where it's a little bit difficult to tell exactly what speed is going on. It could be around 0.25 or it could be up towards 0.29 and if that's the case it's getting close to our limit of 0.3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the, um, the value that's shown on this kind of scale bar if you want to call it a scale bar. So to do that I want to go to my display settings button which is just up here and I want to set the range, do a left click on here, 
and change my maximum velocity to 0 0.3 and go OK and apply and you can see down here on the, on the right hand side my maximum velocity has now gone to 0.3 and close that down and now I can see uh, a little bit clearer what's going on in here so again if I click on my zoom option and click on my pan option I can see that there is an area in here which is certainly up towards the higher end of the scale it's hard to know if it's exactly 0.3 or if it's you know the, the high 0.2s uh, but I suppose maybe the most important thing to note from it at this stage is that that speed is only really in an area where it's unlikely that anybody would be occupying the room you know in the main in the main area the room is certainly below uh, 0 0.3 so if you're happy with the uh, the image you've gotten from there, um, I just noticed one thing on this, and that's that the uh, floors and ceilings haven't don't seem to have been modelled through here the way I would expect it to, them to have done. So I think I may have made some kind of a mistake while I was looking at that earlier on. Um, I can go back on that and I can have a look at fixing it um, at a later stage. But if you want to take this drawing now or this this uh, image now this slice through your fluid dynamics and use it in something like a report what you need to do is to uh, click on this button up here save image to file and it will allow you to save the image as a bitmap you can call it wherever you like whatever you want to call it save it as a bitmap and that can then be uh, cut and paste into something like a word document or some kind of a word processor document um, just while I'm here, I can have a look at temperatures as well. So I'm going to click off velocity and click off velocity here and look at temperature. Um, and uncheck this and have a look and see what my temperatures are like. Okay, so it seems to be broadly similar in terms of the temperature range, where again, I suppose really what you would expect is that the higher temperatures are up towards the, the higher end of the room. Um, I'm just going to close that for a second, and I'm just going to try that again one more time. So back in here, I think what might have happened there was um, the contour velocity for, or sorry, the velocity had uh, been repeated on the temperature. So let me just have a look here. I'm going to go with fill contour and the Y grid and pick somewhere like here and see what happens. OK, so you can see what's happening there now. I'm actually getting a slightly different picture. Broadly speaking, the same thing is going on. The higher temperature is up towards the top of the room and going out the uh, ventilation stack, whereas down below you've got lower temperatures. Now again, what I'm, I'm going to do just to show you how to change the ranges here, right now this scale bar I, I, the reference bar is going up to 26.73 but really there's nowhere in there that's going anywhere near red probably the highest is around here around at 23 so what I'm going to do is change the range of that just to see do I get a more meaningful image out of it so to do that again I come up here to my display settings and do a click I'm going to look at my temperature and then I'm going to set the range and what I might do is set my minimum temperature at something like 18 and just to see if anything is below that and set my maximum at, we'll say, 23 and go OK and apply and close that down. And uh, yeah, this is giving me something a bit more meaningful now. So you can see here most of the air temperature in this uh, zone is in around the uh, mid 19, maybe up as far as about 20. Uh, and from about this level here, it does jump up and it goes up to about maybe 21 22 so I've got from about 19 and a half up to about 20 and a half uh, sorry 21 and a half of a temperature range most of it again is up at the top level which again is what you would expect that the higher air that sorry the hotter air would rise okay so all of these images are taken from microflow um, and again that one can just be saved as a bitmap to whatever file you want to save it to and it can be used then in your uh, report okay so we'll close that down and that is a quick run, run through on how to use the microflow computational fluid dynamics um, tools and applications in the IES software